Hey everybody. <laughs> I got a problem. Not a real problem, but we've got a potato situation. And actually it's pretty remarkable. Like if you ever wonder about whether you can grow something or not, I'm gonna tell you this right now. Plants want to grow. Look at this. <laughs> On this little dinky potato. Look at this thing. Um, so I have been in the last couple of weeks. Let me just fix this. All right. So I have been in the last couple of weeks trying to eat through all of the potatoes. Uh, and I've found, I don't really love potatoes, but I found some really great uh, recipes. One of them is boiling the potato and then smashing it so it's really thin and then baking it in the oven and they get really crispy and delicious and you put spices or whatever you want on it and that has been really tasty. Um, but I'm kind of running out of options and something that Brian and I have always wanted to make is gnocchi. Um, and so we found the sweetest little YouTube video. I will link it in the description box below because even if you don't want to make gnocchi, you will just think it is the sweetest thing. So it's this lovely little old Nona um, with this beautiful Italian accent showing us all how to make gnocchi. So the recipe I got is from this video that I will post uh, below. And um, I can't even remember the name of the channel, but it was fantastic. I'll, I'll put it here um, on the screen uh, because she does deserve definite um, kudos and um, uh, I, credit for, for the recipe. Um, but I just thought, hey, you know what? I'm not gonna waste these potatoes. I, we were actually at the feed store today and bought all of our seed potatoes, um, but uh, I don't wanna waste these. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to try and make gnocchi for the first time. So I'm going to do the prep work. Brian's outside cleaning up from syrup season still. He was cleaning the pans from the evaporator. Um, so the first step, is to boil your potatoes. So I'm looking for two pounds. I'm going to avoid these puny ones like this, but I'm not gonna get rid of them. I am going to clean off all of the sprouts though, because this is um, out of control, completely out of control. But it's absolutely hilarious, like totally hilarious. And I did this last year. This is, the, this is exactly what my seed potatoes looked like last year from the year before. I planted them and they produced. Actually, the deer ate a lot of our potato plants last year, but we were still able to get some potatoes out of it and we ate them all winter long. So this is all that we have left. And it looks like a lot just because of all these sprouts, but it's really uh, not that much. So I'm gonna get going and cleaning, this, cleaning these off right now and then give them a scrub. I just think it's so funny. I'm glad I have my vacuum up because this is gonna be messy. So um, Brian and I actually just got back from town. Um, this recipe, to make, to make this, um, you need a potato ricer. And it's a tool that I've always wanted um, for, for different recipes and I never had. Uh, and I've made do to this point without it, but I broke down today because I want, Brian loves gnocchi. I like gnocchi, but Brian loves gnocchi. So I want to make sure that we do a good job and that it's as close to uh, um, awesome as possible. I'm hoping that the state of these potatoes doesn't change the, the consistency or whatever, but I don't think it will as long as we prepare them properly. Um, we've been eating them, like I said, right up until recently. Um, I just rip off the sprouts and cook them. I cook them and they still taste uh, delicious. So yeah, I'm excited to use the ricer, but man, was it expensive. It was like 50 bucks. So you can get them cheaper on Amazon, I know, but I'm not a huge Amazon shopper unless I can't find it anywhere else. That's all I need. So I'll get those boiling. If you have time to watch the video of this cute little lady, because I am not an expert. Like I said, I've never done this before. But you know what, I don't mind showing you the process because I think it's important to show people, like I am not a chef, I'm not a cook. I don't really even like being in the kitchen, but I like food. So in order to have, eat food, 
you got to make it. Um, and I actually just watched a recent TED talk the other day about um, like the cost of eating at restaurants. And they were saying how the markup on like if you're looking to save money, the markup on eating out is something like 300 percent. That's ridiculous. Um, so anyways, yeah, we, you know, in the last couple of years, I've definitely worked really hard to try and um, grow or harvest our own food so that we would eat at home more often. And although I haven't kept track of it, I'm pretty confident in saying I've saved a lot of money by not going to the grocery store or not um, eating out at a restaurant. And not, we have, we've definitely eaten out at restaurants, but not as much as we used to. Um, I just know like I, if we, we come home, I can easily, if I'm feeling like I don't have a lot of time, we have a lot of pre-cooked meals. I really um, think we have saved a lot, of, a lot of money and I probably should have kept better track. It's actually one thing I want to do is like, I don't, I don't remember what I used to spend on groceries. It used to be between maybe 80 and hundred dollars a week. That was kind of pre COVID prices. Um, and I would shop every week, a hundred percent. And now sometimes I don't go to the grocery store. Well, I've said this before for, there was a time there, I don't think where I, I went probably a month without going to the grocery store. Um, because when I do go, it's usually shelf stable stuff like flour or sugar um, and dairy. We shop for dairy every week. Um, Brian drinks a lot of chocolate milk uh, and I drink milk um, and just butter and stuff like that. But all that stuff can be refrigerated, milk can be frozen. Yeah, so we've definitely saved some some money that way that's for sure it's funny because these look so wrinkly you can see but the skin is so soft on them that when you boil them it just comes right off and when i make those i don't even know what they're called they're like um they're like flat i can't remember i'll link it in the description box below because i've made them a couple times and i really like them um, they're like little flat, like potato frites or something like that. Anyways, they're awesome. Um, but yeah, like these, these turn into those so perfectly. So, um, and you wouldn't even know it was from wrinkly potatoes. So, uh, and it, potatoes, as you know, <laughs> go a long way. We don't eat them often, but when we do, yeah, they, they go a long way. You usually have leftovers. So. Anyways, what, did, what kind did I buy? I bought, um, I think they're called Chieftain again. I bought Chieftains. Uh, oh, one's called Norland. And I think that's cool because there's a place in Norland right up the road. That's why I bought those. They're an early red variety. The Chieftain are a red variety. They, those are the same ones I've been growing for a long while now. Recommended by a friend. Actually, the first time I grew potatoes, it was because a friend had purchased too many and asked if I wanted some. Uh, and it was it was a fun experience. If you wanna grow something much like garlic, I would say potatoes are really hands off. So you put them in and wait. Um, I think that's good. I think the rest are super tiny little puny little things, not even as big as a peanut. So they can go in the compost and we'll probably grow potatoes in the compost. So. That's what I got. That's all that I have left from all that I harvested, which is really good. And I didn't can any this year. So that is also really good. I have two sweet potatoes left um, from my sweet potatoes. So that is also really good. They were amazing. I'm not growing sweet potatoes this year, but would highly recommend. So if you can get sweet potato slips from somewhere or if you've started your own, happy sweet potato growing. One day I hope to have a high tunnel or some kind of indoor, in-ground growing space um, that I can grow sweet potatoes in because they are absolutely delicious. Like we had them last week in a meal and whew, so sweet and so tasty. So it's definitely, I definitely recommend them. Okay, gotta go put these outside. While we were in uh, town today, I have been looking for non-coated baking sheets like aluminum baking sheets and i was finally able to find just aluminum baking sheets 
I'm moving away from non-stick or like Teflon coated anything because it's really not good for you. Um, so I was able to find two non-coated aluminum cookie sheets. So I'm really uh, also very excited about that. Finally, I got my taters in the pot. Now we have to wait till they cook through. So you can stick a fork through the potato uh, and not longer than that. Uh, so we're gonna bring it to a boil and then let it simmer uh, until we can stick a fork through the potato. Okay, some of these smaller potatoes are ready. A fork goes through them easily. Um, so I'm gonna take them out and I'm gonna let the bigger potatoes continue to boil. You don't want to break the skin. I have one where the skin's broken, but my friend Nona says you don't wanna break the skin uh, because you don't want water to get inside the potato. So try not to, you don't wanna cook them too long. Okay, so I've got a cup of all-purpose flour to that. I'm gonna add just about a tablespoon of salt um, but maybe not a full, maybe three quarters of a tablespoon of salt. And I'm also going to add some fresh black pepper. Now Nona on her recipe, she added, I think it was pecorino, but I don't have that. I have Parmesan, so I'm going to add a cup of Parmesan to the recipe as well. So while I wait for those other potatoes to boil, I'm just going to peel these potatoes. And Nona used a knife and that looked like it worked really well. Okay, here comes the magic moment. This is the ricer I got. And so in the video, Nona just put in the potato and pushed. Wow, that's something. Look at that. We're gonna need a lot more potatoes. Nona also said, when you take the potatoes out, they're gonna be hot, so hold them in a towel. And she was right. But this is a really fast way to peel potatoes that I never even, normally, you know, you peel them and then you boil them, but this is, this is genius. And um, Nona also said to let them cool for about 10 minutes before you start mixing them. I would assume that's because you don't want to cook the egg. That's a cool little tool. Okay, so now Nona said to make a little well. And actually, it's really cool. She was working on an old, um, like a piece of plywood, which I thought was really neat. So anyways, we're not. We're going to use this, and uh, I'm going to see if... There's a reason why she was working on a piece of plywood, I guess. Okay, so um, the instructions say to crack one extra large egg. So I learned my lesson about cracking eggs fresh. So I'm gonna just do it here into this little ramekin. These are fresh, so I know it'll be good, but just to be sure. And so what she did was whip it a little bit. Pour it in here, and then she just like did this. So worked it in, worked the egg in. I'm gonna bring you down a little closer. Okay, let's see. Okay, and then she sifted the flour in salt and pepper mixture. So one cup of all-purpose flour about three quarters of a teaspoon, tablespoon of salt. She didn't say her measurement, I don't think. And then some ground black pepper. And then just did the old sifteroni around like this, around over the potato. This is always the tricky part because my pepper is always large, which is fine. So I'm just gonna give it a little sprinkle around. And then, I also bought my first bench scraper and then all she did was like turn it in and mix it. So we'll see how this goes. Um, this is how she did it. I mean, she did it better than this, but gotta get the egg mixed in there somehow. It's 
kind of neat. I've never uh, cooked with potato like this before, so there's a first time for everything. Oh, you know what? You also have to add the cheese. Forgot the cheese. Here we go. I'm gonna cut that in. You know, it feels doughy. I mean, it's gonna be good. Like you can't, it can't not be good. I was trying to get the egg off the. All right, good enough. Okay, here we go. That's definitely dough-like. Look at that. Okay. It smells delicious, but that's because of the cheese, I think. All right. So then no one made it into a log somehow. My sister-in-law married into an Italian family, and I was lucky enough to go over once for dinner and Nona had made gnocchi and it was incredible. Okay, this doesn't look exactly like Nona's on the video, but it's pretty close. So she rolled a log like this. So I don't know, that's what it looks like. Nona, is that right? Who knows? Okay, okay, so then what she did was have some bent flour out, lots of flour. So then she floured the surface. So the next step is to cut chunks and then roll it out. This was about as big as she made them like this. So then she just cut them like this. Hmm. And put them on a sheet. Uh, no, put them over here and like did this. So she showed how to do the, the fork roll, which was very interesting. So you go like this and then you just Oh yeah, no, kind of, but no. This comes with practice. I, I think I'm getting her now. You have to kind of roll it and then roll it off. And then you get that little divot in the bottom and then the fork on top. I have to ask Nona. Love to meet that lady, she's super cute, but so is my brother-in-law's mom, super cute. Traditions like this are gonna be lost if they're not passed down. So I'm super grateful for YouTube and for whoever, I'm sorry that I don't know her name right now, but whoever that person is that captured their mother um, passing this, this on um, so that those of us who aren't of Italian descent still can learn how to make these delicious foods. Well, I hope it's delicious. We have my homemade pasta sauce, tomato sauce from last year that we're going to eat with this. So yeah, just can't go wrong. Bench knife for the win. I really enjoyed using that tool. I used to just use a knife that was helpful but I like doing this I like doing this job it's kind of fun you can just cook them just like this but let's see if I can get a good one here for you that looks so much prettier they look like little cannolis no they look like little gnocchi that's funny it's also funny as I'm doing this just thinking about why I waited this long to try and make food like this. Maybe just because I never had the time. And I don't eat gnocchi like as much as Brian does. Like if we go to a restaurant, like an Italian restaurant, he'll order gnocchi. Um, I think it's just, you know, lack of awareness, thinking that 
They're like, this is easy and fun. It's like crafting with food. So these ones, I'm going to freeze. So uh, I'm putting them on this cookie sheet and I'll put them down in the freezer for about two hours and then throw them in a, like a, in a baggie and then we can have them another time. Hopefully they're good enough that we'll want to, but I think, I think they will be. I think they're gonna be good. So as soon as I'm done this, I'm gonna go down in the basement, grab a bottle of our um, pasta sauce and then um, toss these in the freezer while I'm down there. And then I'm gonna get my water boiling. These only take about a minute to cook once they float to the top of the water. It's kind of like making any kind of uh, fresh noodle. So I'm going to boil a pot of salted water uh, and then add these to them. And I'm gonna cook them in small batches, just like Nona did to make sure that they cook evenly and quickly. Um, yeah, so it's kind of, it's very exciting actually. I'm gonna turn on the heat add some salt okay my water is almost at a full boil but what i'm also going to do before i put these in is i'm just going to put a little bit of my homemade pasta sauce in this pan because nona says you should heat up your sauce whoops okay here we go so we're gonna cook this in batches and i'm just gonna put about half of the gnocchi in And she didn't do anything, she just waited for it. So that's what I'm gonna do. Get this heated up a little bit. And Nona's instructions were when the gnocchi start to dance on top of the water. So you cook them for a minute after they float. Ooh, I got my first floater. That's exciting. I am gonna take them right out of the pot and put them in the sauce. Yes, one, it doesn't take long to cook, but you want to make sure they're cooked through. All right, I think that's good. That's really super exciting. So we'll put them in, put the next batch in here. And that warm, nice warm sauce as it warms. I just turned that pan right down low. Okay, I got to try one. Here we go. Here comes Brian. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah, they're very good. They're very um fluffy. Like I said, I haven't eaten yolky very much, so I don't know if that's right or not, but it tastes very good. Very good. Yummy. Okay, we got gnocchi with a side of sauerkraut and homemade tomato sauce. Good. It's filling. That's not bad. I guess not. So when you go somewhere and you go in and you get like 10, 10 little kibbly bips at an Italian restaurant, I want like a whole plate full. Oh, there you go. Ooh, that sauce is a little guy, a little zing. Okay, folks, we're gonna continue eating our dinner. But gnocchi overall was a success. I would totally make it again. I think it's pretty straightforward and easy to make if you have the time. Even the fork rolling thing, once you get a hang of it, it was pretty quick. Maybe next time I would try trying to make them a little bit smaller if I can get the dough a little bit better. The consistency, I was having a hard time keeping it together, but yeah. So anyways, if you like gnocchi and you've got some potatoes left in your pantry that look like mine, large octopi, go for it. It was super simple to make. I am definitely linking that video below of Nona. <laughs> um, she is awesome. Uh, and I hope I'm gonna try and find some of her other videos because they it was so fantastic. Um, but anyways, hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.